The world that we live in is not flat. It is curved. And nor are all mirrors flat. We talk about curved mirrors. And there's a lot of fascination there. This will help you in understanding some, in amusement parks, sometimes they'll have curved mirrors that you can look at yourself in. But to understand the images formed in those mirrors, this is, uh, this is what it's all about. So, let's talk about spherical mirrors. Uh, a spherical mirror is one that is carved from a sphere, a hollow sphere in this case. A concave mirror is one in which the inside surface, so you take this piece out of the sphere and then you polish the inside surface. Um, so concave means that there's a concavity, means it's, it's kind of like a cave, that's the way I think about it. There's a hollow, hollowness to that surface. So this is what the, the concave mirror would look like, where the, the inside surface is the one that you're going to use for reflections. And um, a convex mirror is where you polish the outside surface, and so convex uh, means that there's something bulging bulging out. So this is the surface that you're going to use for reflection. It's a polished surface. So the ins if the inside surface is polished, it's concave. If the outside surface is polished and used, it, then it is a convex mirror. Define the principal axis and paraxial rays for a curved mirror. The principal axis of a mirror is a straight line drawn through the center of curvature and the midpoint of the mirror. So center of curvature here. Um, what do we mean by the center of curvature? Well, for this big sphere, it is a sphere. And it has radius r. And the center of curvature of the sphere is just the center of the sphere. If you take a piece of that mirror out, you retain that same radius. And then the center of curvature is the center of the sphere from which that mirror was carved. So here's the center of curvature of the mirror. If we were to, uh, this piece of mirror that we've cut out, if we were to extend it around, then it would form a nice big sphere around the center of curvature. And here's the radius of curvature uh, of the mirror. So the principal axis is the line through the center of curvature and the midpoint of the mirror. So that's this line here, passes through the center of curvature and hits the midpoint of the mirror. And light rays that are near to and parallel to the principal axis are called paraxial rays. So if we're near enough to this principal axis, then we call it a paraxial it's just the word we use for it. It's a, a ray that's parallel to and near to the principal axis. Now what you'll see, and we're going to uh, talk about this in, in subsequent slides, is that this concave mirror takes these light rays that are parallel, a paraxial ray, and then it, it focuses them down toward that principal axis. Whereas a convex mirror, if you take angle of incidence as angle of reflection, so here's the normal, didn't draw it very well, but the normal um, to the convex mirror, then, then it's going to reflect away from that principal axis. And so we think about this center of curvature being on the opposite side, which it is for a convex mirror. All right, so to find the focal point, and the focal length of a concave mirror. So we're going to specialize to concave now and state its relationship to the radius of curvature. The focal point is the point at which paraxial rays converge after reflecting from the mirror. So here's a paraxial ray. Here's a concave mirror. And where is it going to go? It's going to hit the mirror, and then its angle of incidence is its angle of reflection. But the, the mirror is curved over this way, which is going to force that ray down. 
And this focal point is the place where all those paraxial rays converge. And the focal length of the mirror, so this is, we use capital F to refer to a point. That's the point where all these rays converge. We use lowercase f to refer to a focal length. It's the distance between this point, the focal point, and the mirror, called the focal length. And, um, and the focal length is related to the radius of curvature i by this relationship here. There, f is, is half of r. So here's f between the focal point and the mirror. And here's r between the center of curvature and the mirror. And the focal length f turns out to be just half of that, uh, of that radius. OK? So rays that are far from the principal axis, so non-paraxial rays, don't converge to a single point. It's only those paraxial rays, the ones that are close to the axis, that converge to this focal point. So these ones that are really in here close, they all come in um, and, and come through that point. But the farther you get from the principal axis, the more you miss hitting that focal point. That's called spherical aberration. A lot of lenses are, uh, a lot of mirrors, for example, for astronomy, are made out of spherical surfaces. And if you keep the rays nice and tightly close to that principal axis, then you get a nice tight uh, focus, good focus. But uh, the farther you get away from it, you get more and more spherical aberration. And, and that's what this is called. Whereas, if you have a parabolic mirror, so these are not cut from spheres, but they're made out of parab parabolic shapes. In this particular case, uh, all rays that are coming in pass through um, the same point, whether or not they're close to the principal axis. So that's one way to get around that. And, and some astronomical mirrors for telescopes are actually um, parabolic to get around that. All right, uh, define the focal point and the focal length of a convex mirror and state its relationship to the radius of curvature. All right, so convex mirror. So we've, we've put the polish on the outside surface of the mirror. So this mirror is bulging out into the room where we're interested. Here's some rays coming in. Here's the reflected rays. Well, um, we've got a problem here because they don't, they don't come to a focus here. They appear to come to a focus on the other side of the mirror, kind of like what we talked about with plane mirrors. So in this particular case, we, we say, OK, the center of curvature obviously is on the, on the back side of the mirror. And, and the focal point is also on the back side of the mirror. And we define the focal length by the negative of the radius of curvature of the mirror divided by 2. So this focal length is a negative number. By convention. That's just how we define it. And as it turns out, it's a great definition because it helps the equations work out really, really well. Then we can use the same equations for a convex mirror as we do for a concave mirror. So, um, but those two are still related by I R, R over 2, but we put a minus sign out here. R is always uh, considered to be a positive number. Whereas F for a convex mirror is negative. 